Here we are in Microsoft List. You can access it by clicking on this waffle picker and then choosing lists over here. You can also access it via Microsoft Teams and there is a mobile application coming soon as well. Uh, so it looks like this, it's just a table, but there are other things that we can do with it compared to other tables. Uh, it does highlight the row based on the consultant. So if I change this to someone else, then as I click out, I can see that the coloring has changed equally as well. So there are a few ways to edit it. You can do it either like this, or you can edit it in grid view. And editing it in grid view takes you to more of a spreadsheet sort of thing. When you're in this kind of view, you can just sort of tap through items and just sort of edit things as you go along. You've got a date picker. You can choose the the items here. You can choose from a drop down if that's what it takes like that. And it uses color coding as well. You can have other stuff and scroll along to get there. It does do a freeze panes on the top header and the leftmost column. That's something that's just been added. You can even have formulas like this is uneditable because it's a formula. These are also details of when it was created and when it was modified by. So this is quite good because it provides you with like an audit trail that Excel is not really able to do. Uh, although it is a little bit of a hack of how you can add those. <laughs> so. If you exit grid view, you get to this stage and you can also change your columns. You can move them around. You can resize them. You can also add new details like this and choose which column type you want. You can then change the view. So you have gallery view and this is where you've got an image associated with it. It's very focused on that image. And you can also from here, just click on that and edit it through the form based editing that you may want to do. You have comments that you can do throughout as well with your organization. Up here, you have a few options. So edit all means you can just toggle through all the things. Copy link means you send a link to only this entry, which is quite good. Again, something that's harder on Excel and edit form allows you to edit the way that this looks. So I quite like this because it means that you can choose to show or hide things and you can also move columns up and down if that's what you so choose. They are going to add the ability to have headers and footers and some other information as well there. The other way to edit a form is to use Power Apps. You can also use Power Automate to trigger a flow. For example, adding a new row in the list could set off something in a spreadsheet, could set off another incident happening. A lower level version of that is the ability to have alerts, notifications. So you can say, for example, the name of the thing, you can add different users, you can get it by email or text messages, and then get notifications when all changes are made or new forms, etc. Uh, you can even choose a view that I'll cover in a little bit. And you can say whether you want it immediately, daily or weekly as well, and then schedule when you would want it over here. You can filter over here. So if you only want to see certain things, you can get it to show those items there. And you can change your view. You can even save something as a view. So if you have a certain filter or something else, you can save that as a current view. Uh, you can choose list, compact list or gallery. As I said, um, calendar view is coming soon. I like the compact list better than the list. It just means you have more stuff that you can see in one screen. You can multi-select and then edit them all in one go. And then you have these things. So this is comments, this is share, just a link to that. And this has other things that you can do. Some useful things to point out are details here. So this has a list of all the things, but also some audit history down here about when it was last edited, when it was last added, etc., etc. You can choose to export to Excel and then it downloads a query file not an Excel file actually. And it first asks you this, so press enable, and then you can choose what you want, a table or a pivot table. I would always do a table into an existing worksheet. Sometimes you get those sorts of errors. They're not too worrying, but this is actually linked. So if you want to refresh it, you can choose the refresh options over here as well. So when data is entered in Microsoft list, you can refresh it this way. 
SharePoint List is a product that has been in the Microsoft 365 suite for a long, long time, but it was a very clunky user interface and it needed to be refreshed. So Microsoft List is in effect the next iteration of that. But more than that, it's also a refreshed, more modern version that's been in a large part inspired by other competitor products like Airtable. Excel is missing a bunch of functionality. For example, um, it cannot have images or attachments in each row of data. As I said before, you cannot really check the edit history or the audit history, and there is no way to set up alerts and notifications based on data that's changed. Excel also has no real alternative views, so you can only see something in a spreadsheet format, whereas these modern alternatives allow you to see things, for example, in a gallery view and editing stuff in a form. Uh, through a calendar view, or this one is a Kanban board, kind of like Microsoft Planner or Trello. Uh, List doesn't actually have this one yet, but these two are out. This is coming soon. Microsoft List forces you to enter data in the right way. Here I have some data in Excel that is in a non-optimal way for a few reasons. So merging cells is often something that causes issues. So here, for example, I'm just multiplying these two, but 100 times four is actually showing zero because Excel treats a merge cell as a blank. Uh, also merging cells for multi-row headers is something I see way too often, and that also makes it very, very difficult to work with. Instead of having a setup like this, the best way to do it from a database standpoint is like this, where you have more rows, but instead of having Cambodia order cost, Laos order cost, etc., you just have a column for country. And the same amount of data is generated through this. But you can get this view by putting in a pivot table. You also get views that are inefficient. So a lot of the times people set things up with what they think looks nice for data entry, but that's not necessarily what looks good for storing data. Then you also get broken formatting. With Excel, a lot of people who don't know this feature end up formatting things cell by cell, which means that it's very easy to break things. Uh, I have a blog post I wrote about how to use this that I'll link to in this video in the description below. Highly, highly useful feature if you're not already using it. The ideal data set should be one row for headers without anything repeated. So that there aren't going to be columns for each branch or columns for each person or each product. They're just going to be in rows. With other database like applications, you're a lot more flexible. You can have one way that people edit the data, which is very, very different from a way that people look at the data and analyze the data. Let's next look at the different options for viewing. So over here, you can create and save different views based on filters and sort options. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to format current view. And format current view allows you to choose either one or the other for the entire view. So let's first do alternating row styles. And we can say that the odd rows can be, for example, darker green and the even ones can be lighter green like that. Alternatively, you could use conditional formatting and you could say, well, here it's got if consultant is equal to David, then blue, but I could easily add a rule. And if, for example, consultant is equal to, say, Kelly, then we're going to say it's another color. And we can see that every time that it's showing as Kelly, it's doing it in that color. So you can also use conditional formatting just for a column. So I could say, for example, if title, uh, format the title, and I can say add a rule where, say, stage is equal to, and then in progress, and then I'm going to just choose a color like that. Column by column, you can then, for example, do some grouping. So I can group by consultant, and then it will put it in groups. That is collapse, expand all, or I can do it for the individual nodes. And I can also, if I want to, have a total under here. So at the bottom of each one, I just get the total count, and the total count comes out down here as well. 
When it comes to lists, I really love the potential of what it can do that Excel can't. The issue is though, it is very slow to use. It involves a mixture of clicking and typing. And it just doesn't work as slickly as Excel where you can just sort of drag down something if you're happy with it and you can just type and press tab and, and it just brings it so, so much faster. So it does force you to enter data in the right way and it does have extra things like notifications and edit history and the ability to have date pickers and images and other items and other views, but it's just too slow to use. I think it also doesn't work very well with multiple tables. You can have a look up columns that will grab data from another Microsoft list, but it's a little bit clunky and it's not a true table relationship as you might expect from this sort of analysis. So let's look at something that is what I think the best of both worlds then. Well, Google Sheets actually fills a lot of the gaps that Excel doesn't do well. You can have loads of different data types, like you can have an image inside a cell. If you go to insert image in cell, you can put it in there directly. You can even use the equals image function, and then you can even recall them with formulas. You can have tick boxes for yes, no columns, any date that is in Google Sheets or data validation, you can double click it for a date picker, and it does really good autocomplete if you are entering data, even if you're not entering the first word in the list. I really love that. You also are able to set up notifications, which you can't do in Excel, or create a form to collect data differently. And you can select a series of data and get a link to this range. And finally, probably my favorite, you have edit history for every single cell. If you right click and show edit history, it has who edited it, when they edited it, and what it was versus what it became. I really, really love this. And I think Google Sheets has a lot of the things that Microsoft List is trying to fill the void between Excel not having. Having said that though, Google is launching a version of Microsoft Lists like product called Google Tables. If you like what you see, then feel free to give me the thumbs up button. I have plenty more videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Teams, Zoom coming out very, very soon. Thanks for watching.